Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Four people rushed to the hospital in Detroit's east side after someone opens fire at a vigil. This happened at the corner of Conant and Minnesota. Police say the victims, two men and two women, are all in their 20s. All four are expected to be okay. Police do not have a suspect in custody. We'll bring you any new information as it becomes available. Also developing a shooting at Briarwood Mall in Ann Arbor leaves one man with a gunshot wound and police on the scene for hours. When the 911 call first came in, it was reported as multiple shots fired inside the mall. Police later saying it was contained to the Vaughn Mar, uh, the Vaughn Mar store. Mar McDonald live in Ann Arbor. Uh, Mara, police are saying this was not random, right? Correct, Evan, and let's be clear right now. Ann Arbor police are not going on the record with much about what happened here, but what they will say is this. From everything that they have looked at, including surveillance video inside this store, they say this does not appear to be a random shooting at the mall. Let me show you. Sky 4 over the mall capturing how police congregated at the entrance of Von Mauer and blocked off mall entrances to traffic and remained in that position for more than four hours. Based on our current uh, you know, findings, it does not appear to be random. When police got to the scene, they found a young man with a gunshot wound to the arm. It is a non-threatening uh, gunshot wound, it appears. 911 callers told police the shooting happened inside Von Mauer, but officers went through the entire mall on foot, clearing the stores and looking for other victims. They found none, as well as looking for suspects, who had apparently already taken off. The suspect or suspects are still on the loose and we're still trying to identify them. Back here live, that young man was shot inside the mall, but he made his way outside of the mall. So by the time EMS and police all got out here, he was out here, so there was originally some confusion about where exactly this had happened, but police confirmed tonight, absolutely inside the store. We're live in Ann Arbor tonight at Briarwood. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara. The U.S. reaching another milestone on the vaccine front with the CDC reporting more than 200 million doses administered in the country so far. So nearly 39% of the U.S. population has received at least one dose of the vaccine, about a quarter, 24% now fully vaccinated. Here at home, the surge of cases continues, though, 8,955, almost 9,000 new cases in the last 24 hours marking the second highest single day total since the start of the pandemic. State announcing today the current COVID restrictions, which include uh, limits on gatherings, restaurants and entertainment venues are going to remain in effect through at least May 24th. Citing the rising cases, Apple, by the way, has now temporarily closed all of its stores in Michigan. The state also expanding its mask mandate to include children as young as two years old. That has many parents of toddlers skeptical of just how effective it can be. Jason Colthorpe live tonight with reaction to these new rules, Jason. Yes, yeah, Kim, you're right. I mean, as any parent of a toddler can tell you, uh, getting a two year old to do pretty much anything is almost impossible. But doctors agree with the state here and they say this is important. We have to try. Try and put your mask on. Soon to be the question so many parents are heard asking their kids. You know how to put it on? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and maybe with that exact result. <laughs> There's That's our good faith effort. <laughs> that's pretty much how Dane and Tiffany Teal expected to go when they try to get their soon to be three year old son Davis to wear a mask. They're worried the state's new rules mandating two to four year olds mask up can put parents in a tough spot. Maybe a lot of people aren't understanding of two year olds and especially our two year old. He's a little uh, he's a master negotiator, so he, <laughs> he's good at getting what he wants. And if that's not wearing a mask, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll act like a two year old. Very high chance they're going to take it off, drop it. It's going to get dirty, likely if it lands on the floor and then you're they're supposed to put it back on their face. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to be a challenge. Dr. Rudolph Valentini knows the struggle to mask up toddlers will be real, but he believes the benefit outweighs the inconvenience. The mask is a two way street, as we know, uh, it protects the person wearing it and it protects the person on the other side of the mask. The teals will make the effort, but like many parents have no problem waving the white flag if the battle gets too fierce. I don't expect him to, to keep it on all day. Um, not going to force it too much and make him upset. 
Yeah, it's going to be tough. But uh, according to Dr. Valentini, the numbers of kids coming down with COVID are on the rise statewide. Uh, and that's mostly due to kids playing sports and being back in school. Uh, the good news with that is they're not seeing capacity being threatened at hospitals, certainly not at children's. Kimberly. And let's hope it stays that way. And by the way, I have one of those two year olds as well who's a master negotiator. Uh, Jason, I'm <laughs> wondering, um, are doctors seeing more cases of Miss C? You know, we've reported on that in the past and haven't heard much about it. Yeah, it's the inflammatory syndrome mm -hmm. that can affect kids uh, weeks after they've had COVID. And it is concerning, at least to Dr. Valentini uh, right now, uh, they're not seeing it uh, as a widespread problem yet, but they are concerned with it because of how it's affecting kids. The symptoms can be severe enough that they end up in the ICU, which goes back to why they're stressing. We got at least tried to get kids in mass right now. Yeah. Yeah. Kim? So difficult with a two year old though. Okay, Jason, yeah. thanks. I like Jason's idea earlier of reverse psychology. <laughs> Don't you wear this mask? Yeah, see if it works. <laughs> see how that works. Uh, chilly start to the weekend. Uh, hopefully a warm-up coming. Yeah, Andrew is in for Ben. Do you think we'll see uh, 60s this weekend, Andrew? There's a good chance of it before the end of the weekend is here, so that is some good news. Everyone loves milder weather, especially this time of year, right? Out there right now, it feels pretty good in some spots. I mean, we're still holding on to 50 degrees for our friends in Ann Arbor, 49 in Adrian. Elsewhere, though, it is much chillier. 43 over at Metro Airport, in the 30s still, 39 degrees over in Port Huron. But that temperature really hasn't budged since you joined us earlier this evening at 6 o'clock. 43 right now, temperatures will continue to drop, just like it's 39 over in Port Huron. Temperatures will drop into the 30s overnight across all of southeast Michigan as these skies clear. Now, by morning, we'll see partly to mostly sunny skies, but it will be colder with temperatures starting in the middle 20s here in the city, but in the low 20s in many outlying areas, especially the Thumb and in Livingston County. Where do temperatures go from here? They do get closer to 60, but is it on Saturday or Sunday or both? We'll talk about that and your seven day forecast in minutes. OK, Andrew, the Livingston County prosecutor says state rep Jewel Jones was driving drunk and resisted arrest during an incident last week along I-96. Today, Jones made his first appearance in court to be arraigned on those charges. Prosecutors say Jones's blood alcohol content was more than twice the legal limit. It's alleged he drove from Southfield to Fowlerville, where he crashed his car in a ditch. Prosecutors say Jones became uncooperative when paramedics tried helping his passenger who was in need of treatment. That's when police were called. Your Honor, the defendant's uh, behaviors were reported to be um, so serious that they had escalated to a point that the troopers had to um, haze and pepper spray the defendant. The judge has ordered Jones not to drink alcohol or do drugs and says he'll undergo random testing. Uh, an orange barrel alert, I-75 now closed for the weekend in southern Oakland County. Freeway shut down in both directions between I-696 and 8 Mile for bridge and road work. All the lanes, though, will be reopened Monday morning by 5 a.m. A coronavirus vaccine clinic in Dearborn is staying open tonight until 1 a.m. to accommodate an important religious tradition during Ramadan. It's being held at the Access Building on Maple near Haggerty. During Ramadan, Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset, and some have been concerned about not being able to eat or drink following their vaccination. So Access organized this night event to help ease their concern. Some clerics believe that uh, taking a vaccination could break your fast, uh, although several of them did come out and say that that is not the case for those that did feel that was. We wanted to make sure that we gave people exactly what they wanted, and so we're happy to be able to, to provide it. Access says all appointments for tonight are filled, and they hope to have another late-night clinic soon. Still ahead, Michigan's COVID surge is slowing production at a local auto plant. Yeah, we'll have a look at which top-selling vehicle is being impacted by the outbreak. And witnesses say he got out of his car and started randomly shooting at people. What we're learning tonight about the gunman who killed eight people at a FedEx warehouse. But first, Detroit firefighters rescue a baby from a burning home despite being told that everyone had gotten out safely. The scariest thing about the whole situation is like, how do you not tell us that there's a child in there? What firefighters say happened as soon as the baby's mother saw them carry the child to safety next.